From Nashville's WSM Radio, the original home of the Grand Ole Opry, this is a Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. Hey, it's Charlie Matos, and in this episode of our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast, a really special visit with Steve Warner. Steve's been a longtime member of our Grand Ole Opry family. He's a member of the Kentucky Music Hall of Fame and the Musicians Hall of Fame. But on October the 30th, he was officially inducted into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame. We would talk about that and a lot of great memories with our friend Steve Warner. Enjoy our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. This is Coffee Country and Cody. 26 years ago on May 11th, 1996, Steve Warner debuted at the Grand, Grand Ole Opry. Opry. That was your, actually your induction night, yeah. so I don't know how many times you'd played it before you were inducted. Had you played it a lot? Oh, yeah, with Bob Lumen a million times. The first time I did the opera, But as a solo artist. Oh, as a solo. Because uh, you played I, it first with well, Dottie. Well, I did it. My very first would be with Bob Lumen. He put me on a couple times as a solo, just pushed me out there. I wasn't... So that was before Dottie. I, yeah, but well, no, it was after Dottie. Oh, okay. but it was So this would be... I worked with Bob like 1976, 1977. I was a young guy, but he would, oh, why don't you do one? And I think everybody, you know, Hal Durham, all those guys were like, oh, looking like, oh, no, what is he doing? You know, <laughs> Bob took over out there when he came out. You know, Bob oh, Lemon. He was, <laughs> but, uh, but the, as an artist, yeah, it was, it was, I don't even, I could, I did it so much with Dottie West and Bob Lemon. First Opry ever was still at the Rhyme. And, when and, I used to and do Dottie Opry. was running late. Mm-hmm. Always, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, remember the heart. story of, you said they were actually announcing her, oh, and y'all yeah, were in my, the alley getting out of the car. My very first time, I was like, we turned the corner at 5th and Broadway, and they were, Roy Aiken was saying, here she is from McMinnville, Tennessee, oh, gosh. and we're turning the corner listening to WSM, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I'd never even been in Ryman ever, you know, I'm like... Yeah, that was the first one. That's a good first one you know, ever do. And Steve said as he was going to the stage as fast as he could, all he could see were these Hall of Fame yeah. faces Jimmy, going Marty by Robbins, like telephone posts on the side and, of the oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You know. But, you know, but it was what it was. It was incredible. Once I did it a few times and the nerves, you know, but yeah. the running, where do I plug in? You know, not even knowing anything. I mean, I was eight, 17, 18, I think, something like that. So you know how Caitlin Butts feels oh, getting ready for oh, her yeah. debut. And I can't even Saturday. imagine the pressure nowadays, too. It's different world. I mean, social media and stuff. You see out there, when I'm out there and the people are doing their debuts, the camera crew following them. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's mm-hmm. you know, uh I, it's a little hard to, for my memory to remember my very first appearances as as a as you know the, the, certainly I remember my induction you know of course that was a crazy night and wonderful but uh, so who was, who did yours Bill Anderson uh, as, as somebody uh, on the road said I really love uh, Bill Anderson induced you into the opera you know, you know, like, <laughs> a fan said that I go well thanks you know but yeah Bill Jeez. Bill was the uh, or conducted or what I can't remember oh. what they said but but uh, Bill Bill was wonderful that night and he did uh, my the other night he was there you know too, so. uh, let me say He's, songwriters hall of fame he, induction oh, here in Nashville. i wasn't gonna say it you, you know bill it induced you and then <laughs> garth brooks sang in your he honor did. he sang holes in the floor of heaven and yeah. uh, was wonderful he killed it i mean did a great job and uh what did you say? You was it Billy Kirsch that you co-wrote? Yeah, Billy Kirsch. You yeah, said Billy you killed off uh, two people in the first two verses. <laughs> then you went to lunch, came back, yeah, and finished hey, it. Late. I don't want to hear about these. Sat- we did two people in our song, man. You know, and then do yeah. Well, I heard you say that. And then we go to lunch. You should we do it or go to lunch and then come back and do it? Or- <laughs> the body count's pretty high. It's getting high. Yeah, I'm telling it's you, higher. Man. higher. I think I may hold the record, yeah. Billy and I, especially you know. for a non-bluegrass song. Know, well, yeah. You, don't forget, yeah, if you. Count Bluegrass World, you know, yeah. that's I won't even go there, but that's <laughs> that's another the death and dying songs. Woo, <laughs> it's a know. different feeling. What's it like though when you have those m- moments that you you I'm sure you dreamed about it. I'm sure you yeah, had that you thought know. maybe and then it actually happened. As a little Indiana kid, know, you know, right? up in a Hoosier up in Indiana, you know, you sit around and as a young kid and go, if I one of these days when I get on the Grand Ole Opry and when I get in the, you know, you dream and think about that stuff and then one day you kind of turn around and go, whoa, I'm kind of living all this stuff. You know, it's incredible. Oh. And, 
I'm so, as I said, I'm so humbled and grateful to, to be in that Hall of Fame with such cool people. And you look in there and look at all the names and you go, hero, hero, hero. Mm-hmm. Grew up trying to be like them, you know, wanted to emulate their style. And my dad was a real big influence, you know, old Kentucky fiddler. Roy, right? Roy, mm-hmm. Roy Monroe. <laughs> oh, man. And uh, I, I started to say when I got up for my speech, I truly, I was going to say this and I chickened out, but everybody I said this to said, oh, gosh, you should have done it. Uh, but I, I really, truly, real seriously, straight face, I was going to say, man, I really want to thank all the little people that I walked on, <laughs> stepped on to get here. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I just about did it when I chickened out. So, all those people, little people I walked on, I loved it. But that would have worked and everyone would have laughed because they know you're the complete opposite of that. Uh, that you never did that, not one time. Stepped in over career. and all that stuff. So, oh, that's sweet. He no. told a story as a part of his speech that Dottie saw you and wanted to hire you to play bass. And you said, Dottie, I'm still in high school. Yeah, she goes, can you, can you leave immediately? I need a bass player. And I go, I'm a, I'm a senior in high school. <laughs> she goes, oh, <laughs> I'm sure I looked like a senior in high school, uh, you know. But. but isn't there a great story about the first gig you guys were going to the West Coast and you yeah, picked Reno. the Gatlins up in, in Amarillo well, or something? So I get on the bus and our first trip, you know, I never had been on a, bu- a bus trip like this. So you again, know? you just graduated. Yeah. You're 18 years yeah, old. Yeah, just, yeah. Well, I was not, e- not even graduated yet. Oh, this okay. Was, I was, oh, so you did oh, school. I, well, I had to... They let me grab my grades are okay. They let me graduate early, but there was a half a credit of government that I had to kind of do on the road. It was a okay. mandatory second uh-huh. semester thing, uh-huh. and and all my teachers were great because they loved it. They knew I was on uh-huh. fire and wanting to do music. My grades are okay, so I t- I graduated early, and I did graduate, but it was in on the I was in Reno or somewhere when I <laughs> when my graduation <laughs> ceremony happened. I was in London or wherever I was. That's fine. But my first trip, you know, with we was Reno, Nevada, a two-week gig at the Ponderosa Hotel in Reno, Nevada. And Dottie kept telling me about, we're going to pick up the backup singers. They're going to open the show for us, uh, and then uh, they will be our backup singers. It's a two-week gig, you know, and uh, I didn't even know how to read. I did, really didn't know the show, didn't, you know, had, I was trying to, I learned to read charts on the way out there. And uh, and we got to Amarillo to pick up this group, and it was the Gatlins. They weren't even here yet. They were still, and it was the Gatlins and their sister Ladonna. Yes, yeah. yeah. Who Larry says is the best singer oh, of the bunch. She's, <laughs> she's tremendous. I mean, you know, and and really, it would have been the sister in the group, yeah. but she decided she wanted to do something else in her life. And so much better looking than those guys. Too. <laughs> uh, sure, but sure. yeah. So we picked those guys up, and Dottie was bragging about Larry. You know, his songwriting, and how, you know, and so. Sure enough, as soon as they got on the bus, he broke out a guitar and sang songs for hours and hours. I remember pulling into Oklahoma City, and uh, uh, I told somebody, I got out of my bunk, and I said, uh, are we there? And they go, uh, we're about halfway. And I go, oh my gosh, where are we going? <laughs> that was my very first trip, you know. So took forever. <laughs> what did you learn from those early road trips oh that you were gosh. like, this is something I the need Gatlin's. to file away? God, it just... Uh, uh, I was watching every little thing like, okay, note to self, do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> really don't do that. No, it was, but those guys, I remember the Gatlins went skiing up at Tahoe once and I didn't ski and they kept saying, oh, you, they're calling me names, you was, you, you, come on, let's go skiing. Oh, I can well, hear it. So mm-hmm. then the next day at, at, when we get ready to do the show, here they all come in like the drum and five chord, oh. Revolutionary <laughs> War, all on crutches. <laughs> you know, oh, I go, I see you guys, <laughs> you know. Oh, that's great. It was, those are great days, you know. I remember great uh, memories. Larry famously saying that Dottie West saw him first time she'd heard about him. She saw him. She said, "Wow, you got to be able to write a song. You look too much like Mickey Berry, Newberry, Mickey not Newberry. to." Yeah, and he does. And, yeah, if you go back and look at those. Yeah, pictures. the early ones, really. Yeah, and so Larry and I kind of came along with the. I've watched his writing and. With Dottie, though, you know, I talked about this, Bill, on Dottie's house out on Shies Hill out there. She lived Shies Hill uh, near Green Hills. Yeah, and, I've heard this story, but and, the and audience they, wants to hear it. There this. were always, it was a songwriter's 
haven i mean it was she was such a great songwriter and i always brag on her the first female country artist to ever win a grammy you mm-hmm. know that's pretty cool man mm-hmm. and she wrote it here comes my baby in 64 and uh so she was my big sister you know and really took looked out for me i'd walk on the bus and she'd say we were leaving for a trip and she'd go what'd you write this week you know where's your notebook let me let me she was oh. making put, taking me to school you know but and, you said the living room looked like a hippie hostel of songwriters. yeah it was it was songwriters it, you know you'd come off the road and there was you you don't know what writers might be there you know i remember red lane i remember meeting red and you know i remember being on the road and the songwriters songwriters you know and she introduced me to merle haggard and she introduced me to Roger Miller and people, you know, she was, and they all loved Dottie and she loved them. Jeannie Seeley, you know, was, they were best friends. Chris Dottie. Christopherson? Yeah, Chris Christopherson. Mickey Newberry? Yeah, and Mickey. I remember Dottie, they always talked about Mickey a lot. They, they Her and Byron, they just adored Mickey. We listened to a lot of his music mm-hmm. on the road, you know, so. And she finally kicked you out and said you had to get your own place? Get out. <laughs> I loved it because I was sleeping on the couch downstairs. Now it's Michael Rhodes' house, you know. But, he lives there. <laughs> but I used to, uh, I, I got real comfortable on that couch because Johnetta was upstairs cooking those her beautiful breakfasts and biscuits, and Dottie was a great cook. I mean, great cook. So I was like comfortable, and finally they go, uh, you probably ought to look for your own place here soon. <laughs> Do I need to? <laughs> Steve, where are you going to be living next week? <laughs> Sign Dottie. <laughs> we'll be back with Nashville songwriter, Hall of Famer, and Grand Ole Opry star, Steve Warner. <laughs> True story. I've told him that before. I'm like, I love that song, but you crush me, so it either gets turned off or I pull over. Bill, you know, I told you this probably. I'm Charlie. I think I've told you guys this, but when I when we wrote that Billy Curse, by the way, he lives in Santa Fe now. He's I talked oh, to right? him the other night, and he congratulated me, and he's a tremendous songwriter, but a great friend. But when we wrote this song, about about a day later, I was still real high on this song. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, we may have a cool one here. You know, and I never want to jinx it, but so our a guy that worked in our management office, his mother was in town. I've told this probably, but his mother was in town and visiting him, and really sweet lady. And I I, I asked her, I said, I was in, I can't, I don't go in that office much. I never went in, but I went downtown Franklin to the office that day, and she was there, and I met her, and there was a guitar, and I said. I said, I'd like to, do you mind if I play you a song? I'm so excited. We just wrote this yesterday. And I I, I sat down and played holes uh, for her. And she had a little tear at the end. And she says, that's so pretty. I don't ever want to hear that thing again. <laughs> <laughs> That thing. I don't oh, ever want to hear that fair. thing again. Oh. Scorches, please don't ever well, say that again. That's the reaction you want, oh, Charlie. That's that's not well, what you had that. You had two teardrops. Uh, mm-hmm. You you said that Marty Robbins was Mr. Teardrop, and all of a sudden, you had become Mr. Kleenex. <laughs> 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 was it Dottie or somebody who said, a tear, a tear in his eye and a tear in his pants? Or something like that. I don't know. Well, and she, now, she had a line for that. The, the, the youth don't realize how lucky they are. Because nowadays, if you hear that song, you get like 10,000 people. They got their cell phone out. You know what? Back they, in my day, I'd burn my thumb off during that song. Burn. Absolutely. No. Yeah. You know, I do that song now, and they'll have, uh, uh, when I, it's funny on that song, too, they'll have the old place will have their phones, and it's, well, yeah, just like that yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. And it's amazing seeing that. Oh, it's uh, beautiful, it. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. When everybody's swaying yeah. back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. But it was more painful free, in the day. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. with you, Charlie. Yeah. I was like, ouch. You know. I used to have the Zippo app, and it was an actual little lock. <laughs> <laughs> that would open on your phone and you oh, could do that. to refill so. it or anything? I don't think so. <laughs> it's good. It's good. We've talked about famous folks with whom you shared the stage, the studio early in your career. And we mentioned Dottie and Bob Lumen and Bill Anderson, whom you met early on. But Chad Atkins obviously came mm. up in conversation during your acceptance speech on Sunday night. Always. You know, he was, he was a huge, huge influence and I was uh, working with, he signed me to RCA in 77, and uh, we were making records, or trying to make records and trying to make a hit, uh, and we had about three singles out that all kind of did okay, you know, but inched up close to the being a hit, but never quite, and then I, was, I started touring with him. Uh, we had a few singles out then. I never put an album out with Chet, but we then I started touring with him. When Bob Lumen, I was on the road with Bob. Bob passed away at 42, you know, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and and uh, 
and so you, you I, said you played bass for Chad because that guitar position was filled ladies <laughs> and gentlemen <laughs> between Paul Yandel and Chad uh, in that band I go yep I play bass well, anyway Paul Paul said you know we need a bass player would you want to go and I think you know they knew that I'd been working with Bob and was un- unemployed really and trying to make records with Chad at the same time and but what a wonderful guy Chad he was you know w- my hero and my uh you know inspiration and gee just like a big brother or second father type figure you know he was so big in my life and but he always you know he would always want to hear my songs he want he was always interested in the original songs too he would i'd go to his house at his studio and i said this i think he and les paul were they had home studios back in the late 50s you know they were their mid 50s way ahead of their time way yeah. ahead of it way yeah. ahead. now you don't go into any home that don't have a home studio in right. this town you know yeah. but back then they were the only people that had tape machines that, you know they're making records in their house but i i used to go to chet's and we'd record and he would always say what you got you been writing some stuff and i'd play him something let's cut it let's cut a track on it and he loved the original stuff you know and I'd try to get him to play, and he'd always go, no, you do the solo. No, I want to hear you do it. You so know? did your first cut come with something that you recorded that you had written, or did you get a cut from somebody else as a writer first? Uh, no, it was. I had some outside cuts, but I did cut a couple of my songs. I cut them already taken. Uh, that was the first one of the first things I cut. Chet really liked that song, and I, I wrote that when I was 18 with Dottie West out on the road. I wrote... Uh, a guy that knows nothing about fatherhood at that point, but I was writing, uh, you know, writing uh, I'm Already Taken, and we went in and cut it, and, um, and of course, it was it was the very first single, uh, one of the early singles, and didn't do much, but I re-recorded it in 2000 when I got to Capitol. I played it for all the A&R people, and I didn't, I failed to mention that it was a real old song, but they loved it. You know? <laughs> Whoops, I forgot to tell you, I wrote that a long time ago. But they all go, oh, we got to cut that. You know, so uh, it became a hit all those years later. And what year did Chet bestow upon you the title the of CGP? CGP. You know, that guitar would be, player. CGP, that would be, uh, what year would that be? I'm thinking uh, 90 three or four somewhere in there Uh, and how that happened was i was we were up for a grammy uh they called from capitol and said you this song is up for a grammy this year you're and i go that's great who i'm up in that category what who i'm up against and they said well you're up against chet atkins and i went oh okay great (laughs) and uh chet called me left a message and said i'm voting for you tonight we went up to madison square garden and they was up there that year and and i said uh he said I, he left a message and he said I'm voting for you. He said you should win this and he goes and he and uh, and, and he said by, by the way I've got 16 of them. Click, you know. <laughs> hung up, you know. I've got 16 anyway. So but anyway, Chet won and then when I got home he was doing the Monday night uh Cafe Milano. Remember he was doing Oh that? yeah. He played like kind of like Les Paul was doing in New York but he was doing it every Monday down and it was great. A residency we call yes, it now. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. That was long time ago too he was doing that and there were people all kinds of people coming in playing uh, all kinds of cool guests sitting in and so call, Chet called and said you got to come down Monday night and Karen talked to him and said well, I, well I'll tell him and he goes no he's adamant you he has to come so that night he made he gave me he made me a CGP, got me up, and made me an honorary CGP. And he reached behind his amp and said, "And I want you to have this." And he gave me his Grammy that he just oh. said won. And oh. and he said, "Folks, you can't give these away. They don't. They frown on that, and they do. You, they tell you you can't give away Grammys." And so he had a plaque. He said, "So that's why I put a plaque on this. It says on loan to Steve Warner from Chet Atkins. So, <laughs> so I have, still have it with my other Grammys sitting up there, but that one that says on loan, you know. So that's it's Chet. So I'm just borrowing it. All right, Garth Brooks. When did you meet the first time? Um, that was early on. He was in college. I mean, we was. Oh, really? Yeah, that he far was back. way back. Yeah, way back. He was. <clears throat> he was just college or coming out of college excuse me <clears throat> and he would open shows for us and uh, we would get out in the sound check we'd all be out in the parking lot throwing footballs and stuff and hanging out and he was just a kid 
wanting to know about the business, you know. And How about you could that? tell that he was something else, you know. You could mm-hmm. tell, oh, this kid's going to be something, and he is, you know. So yeah, it was the eyes, wasn't it? Like the python <laughs> in the Jungle Book. Once you looked into his eyes, it was over. <laughs> yeah. He had you where he wanted you. That's right. Steve Warner's a songwriter, Hall of Famer. As of Sunday night, he went in. We'll continue to talk about that event and music like Garth's and Long Neck Bottle, Keith Urban's Where the Black Top Ends, Quentin Black's Nothing But the Tail Lights, on and on the list goes. One small miracle for Brian White, Steve Warner on Coffee Country. And co- and they do come true for Steve Warner. Still, yes, still do. coming true. Yes, they do. <laughs> Got dreams of one day being in the Songwriters Hall of Fame. And Kelly Sutton, as we know, Ooh. it happened on Sunday night in the ceremony there. The gala. We don't even call it an induction. It's a gala. That included Hillary Lindsay, all, uh, Whitey Johnson, <laughs> Gary Nichols, yeah. Yeah. Shania Twain, Chips Moman, and David Malloy. So what a class. So disappointed Shania wasn't there because I sent her a message to bring me Swiss chocolate. I need some. Oh, that's, that's the best chocolate in the world. That's what she, you wanted. Yeah, that's, uh, no. I, well, I, she owes you. I really, yeah, I really yeah. was looking forward to. She, yeah, for those of you who know, she lives in Switzerland. She mm-hmm. does. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she's wonderful. Congrats to my congrats to all the people going in because that's a great class to be along with and uh, just fun. I went night before last. Gary Nicholson and I went and taught a. Uh, taught i won't say taught we spoke and played performed for a class at belmont university and that was so fun and uh i learned a lot about gary i didn't know i'd known him for a hundred years and uh, he's great stories and uh, yeah, great man. background but that was a fun fun night man and to be in a room full of all your heroes it's pretty cool uh, tell us about all the people that uh, we now know as icons in this business in some cases, Country Music Hall of Famers, who used to open for you. That's how oh. long, because you started <laughs> so young. Amazing. Yeah. It's kind of silly. You, you started so it's young. Great, oh, yeah. That it's, it, this happened. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, it's kind of, it, it It might lend itself to, come on, Warner, what happened to you? Get it going, man. Come on. Work harder. Let's go. Never. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, back in the day, you know, uh, all the people, you know, I remember George Strait opened shows for me. Garth did, you know, Reba, Vince. I mean, all kinds of people. Uh, all your heroes, you know, and it's uh, – what's nice, though, about it, Bill, really, truly, is all those people – we remember those early days, and I've opened for Reball across Canada and United States. Later, you know, we I, uh, we were got to be so close, and and uh, the nice thing is those folks, all people that I mentioned, are dear friends, and they remember those days. Garth remembers all those days that we would play. He was just out of college with his band, uh, you know, and we would play shows. And I'd watch <clears throat> standings, pardon me, at the edge of the stage, watching, and going like. This guy is killing this place. He's going to be huge. You could see it even back then. You know, he's uh-huh. just out of college and just had that it thing, you know. And, uh, of course, you know, it wasn't long that he was bigger than the Beatles and Elvis and everybody all put together, you know. So it's so, crazy. What was the night that you uh, – it, it was – Alabama was a headliner. Yeah, I'm, I was saying we played Hemisphere Arena, the old Hemisphere Arena, you know, in San Antonio. No, San Antonio Spurs oh, played there. Oh, the Spurs Brandon. played there. And it was the, what I like even more impressive to me was if you just walk down the street a little ways, Mi Tierra was there right on the river. Oh, and it yeah. was a, one of the best Mexican, re- <laughs> still is, it's still going. It's yeah. been in the family for like 150 years or something yep. like that. And we open 24 7. You know, and they never close. And you can go in. We've been there and there three o'clock in the morning many times you yeah. know uh, eating after a show but that night it was this is the era but it was uh, george had just come out george Strait was just out just came out with his first record it was uh terry gibbs somebody's knocking mm-hmm. would you let him in uh terry gibbs and then george Strait, and then me in alabama that was the lineup. It was a great show, man. Oh, and man. Alabama was on fire, you know, then. And we were both on RCA, me and Alabama. So, But that's San Antonio is one of my favorite places on the planet. I mean, I love it. And mm-hmm. it's where I came from. Oh, to yeah. Nashville, to that's WSM where, from Might KKYS. be where we met. I mean, we met. Well, it certainly would have been, you know, early Steve, days. you guys like to play basketball on the road. Mm-hmm. So we get a bunch of the jocks together and we yep. go over to the I University remember. of Texas, San Antonio and to the, the run road full, runners. Run full court, too. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it, we, we would. We, you run you full can court. take the kid out of Indiana, but you can't take the basketball <laughs> yeah, out of his know, hand. Baby, that's all we got. Here's the best part. You got it. Shirts and skins. Oh. Back when we didn't 
my ticket or short Would time. never dream of that these <laughs> days. <laughs> it would be with... Some of us never even dreamed of it back then. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, don't even bring it's that so up. Funny. <laughs> and Steve's out there shooting the three. So I can't take it inside. I can hurt my hands, you know. I can oh, hurt point. my hands if I, I take it show inside. Tonight. Yeah, I'm going to shoot from I, way out here. But I use that so they wouldn't foul me. They right, went easy on me because, <laughs> hey, I got to play and sing. Right. And so I'm like... I got to play it. You know, Dan Patrick famously said, uh, yeah, yeah. I think he played at Dayton, didn't he, Charlie? Dan Patrick, the talk show host. Uh-huh, yep. Mm-hmm. Dan said, you know what? I wasn't much of a scorer when I was in college, but I sure could shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, I did break my hand in Houston one night. At the, oh, no. We played, we played uh, it was a sold out show at the Summit. I was opening for Hank Williams Jr., and we got in a big pickup game that afternoon. Some of my buddies from San Antonio were there. Mm-hmm. And we got in this big pickup game in Houston. And I went for a ball and dove. I may have, pardon me, folks, if I've told this no, 100 times. No, I don't know but, this. But I dove for a ball. Me and a guy uh, dove for a ball. And the ball hit. You can still, this finger oh. needs to be over in there somewhere. But anyway, oh. I dove for a ball. And the end of my fingers hit the, the tips of my fingers uh. hit this ball. And it and it just immediately is hurt. And I got up. And true. They, so everybody goes, can you move it? Can you move your hand? I go, yeah. And they go, bring it in. You know. So we played another hour. <laughs> Oh. And, and then I did the show. By the time of the show, it, oh. my, my hand was like, and then everybody's going like, well, you can move it. It's not broken. And I did two more shows before we got home. And when I got home, I went straight uh, straight to the doctor, x-rayed it. Karen saw it and went, oh, my God, it's purple. And, yeah. and I went and they, yeah, broken in two places, that metacarpal. And uh, I'd be, I, already, I did like three shows with a broken hand, didn't even know it. So know? to all you prospective guitar slingers and singer-songwriters do out there, it won't keep you out of the Hall of Fame. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I but thought you were going to say, don't do it. Don't. <laughs> but you may miss a couple of paydays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's all we you have. do it. Man. Love you, Steve Warner. Thanks, Thanks for coming you. to see us, pal. Glad to be with you And guys. congratulations. Thanks, guys. Couldn't Appreciate be more it. proud of anybody. Thanks. Steve Warner, Kelly Sutton, Charlie Mattos, Bill Cody. How about a little Garth Brooks with Steve Warner, huh? Love. Nick Bottom Let go my hand In jukebox Don't start playing that song again Cause there's a girl at home Who loves me You know she won't understand Long Nick Bottom Thanks for listening to the Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast Make sure to subscribe So you never miss an episode And please leave us a five-star review This podcast was produced through the facilities of WSM Radio in Nashville, Tennessee. The hosts of Coffee Country and Cody are Bill Cody, Charlie Mattos, and Kelly Sutton. Producer, Eric Markham. WSM General Manager and Director of Content and Programming, J. Patrick Tittle. Copyright 2022. Opry Entertainment Group Holdings, LLC.